It was the dream in all of us to create something, to have a legacy, uh, to build something from scratch. The purpose of FC Cincinnati really was focusing on, in on driving advocacy for the sport, igniting passion in Cincinnati for soccer. And all we needed was a spark. Spectators that we used to go into Reds games, Bengals games, they never seen anything like the Bailey. Our marketing plan was heavily based on word of mouth. We found out there is going to be a professional soccer team here and we thought well professional soccer teams have supporters groups so we got together we created these groups and we showed up we decided we were going to have a supporter group name, and we launched that early i think it's so important in a stadium that the, the supporter groups have their one area and when we went to nipper we saw that where where that area needed to be behind the goal and uh, but we needed to name it and so we're going to call it the bailey because the Bailey was the part of the castle in medieval times that troops went, the army went, before going to battle. And at Nippert, our team was gonna come out from under the Bailey. And so we sort of like the idea of they're coming out from where are the armaments. And the armaments, our weapons, were our supporters. I'll give our supporters all the credit. They, they really uh, ran with it and built such a, a brilliant atmosphere. And uh, for it to all come together so quickly is unique. We just embraced it because it was ours. It was something where I could go and unabashedly celebrate being a Cincinnatian. That first game, 14,000, a brilliant Bailey. There was smoke, there were drums, there were chants. People were going crazy. And again, I just knew this word of mouth, it's just gonna go. We're getting ready to go in there and I tapped Kevin. I said, look, look at this. He's like, what? I said, they're all here. He's like, what do you mean? I said, they're here before the game started. The home opener set the tone for everything I think that FC Cincinnati would go on to achieve because the fans were so loud and so rapid and it was soccer in Cincinnati as we had never seen it. Immediately the Bailey, I think, became a hit. I think the second game was around 17,000. I think the third or fourth game was Pittsburgh. We got over 20,000 and again, at that point, I think there was no turning back. And it was kind of a shot across the bow of the entire global soccer community that Cincinnati had arrived. From the moment that we were given the MLS bid, we wanted that first MLS match to be an absolute spectacle. And the city didn't disappoint, the fans didn't disappoint, and the team didn't disappoint on that first ever MLS match. Like, it was the event that you had to be at. We really wanted to make sure that it was a, a day that we could celebrate and a day that we could remember. Um, as usual with, with FC Cincinnati, it was a bunch of organic energy that we were really unsure where to put it. Um, but when it came to time of, we, we made the best of it and we all showed up and, and celebrated the city together. We knew the march for the first ever MLS game was going to be historic. I don't think anybody had any idea the magnitude of what the march was gonna be like for the Portland game in our first ever match in MLS. I think the march came about again by accident. A lot of soccer cities have a tailgate culture, but Cincinnati has a pub culture. We all meet at the bars and we gather before games. And then when it's time to go to the, the match, we all march together. And part of it is purposeful in that we symbolize that we're all in this together, that we're all driving toward one goal. The idea was to do it better each time, each day, and see where we could go with this. As the march built, it was like the fans' intensity was building and the importance of our ability to work together really shows in the march. And it grew to unprecedented levels that we didn't even expect. And uh, it became one of the hallmarks of Cincinnati fandom is that huge march. I remember vividly media around the country, soccer fans around the country that said, they saw the visual, they saw the pictures, they saw the video and they said, no way is this real. What is happening in Cincinnati? Is this for real? I kind of organize the march once it comes into the stadium and I'm in my position waiting for the march to come in and I knew it was gonna be big. 
but I started getting messages that you've never seen anything like this. Like, there's no space on the street. The street is just a, a, a sea of people. I don't know how many people were there. Um, I was just sat behind my drum. You know, one of my friends said, hey, turn around and look. And I turned back and I see it just going up the hill. And I was like, oh my gosh. It was absolutely just jaw dropping. I remember maybe three quarters of the way through warm-ups, you, you hear them marching in and chanting, and, and I think that was the moment when everyone realized that this is something different, this is something special, and this is going to be a legendary night here. I was sending it to all my friends back home going, look what we did, look what we built. That march, I have family members that have been in that march, and they'll tell me about that march for the rest of their lives, uh, because they flew in from other parts of the world and something I've seen in other places, but I don't know. Cincinnati may have the best one. Uh, it truly is something very, very special. Cincinnatians, if there's one thing they love, it's Cincinnati. We just figure we have a job to do, and that's celebrate the city and celebrate where we are and where we're going and make sure that everyone knows that, that we're here and we're proud of ourselves. That's what's special about the club and the city and the connection they have is it all organically grew together. This is for real, and this was what was built. This city loves soccer, and this city loves FC Cincinnati.